All right. Good evening, everyone. I hope you're doing well. So I just noticed that the Golden Globe nominations came out. So I think I'm going to go and give you guys a live reaction of what my feelings are about these. Um, oh, wow. Yes, these guys are with me and they are a menace. And I just got poop all over me. Excuse me a moment. Yeah, these guys are probably going to join me and wreck all sorts of havoc tonight. Anyways, the whatever goes, goes. So let's see what these nominations are like. So before I even go in, I'm really hoping, I'm praying to God that I see everything ever all at once get at least some of the big nominations. Obviously, can't ask for too much, but at least something. I'm expecting to see Tar, the Banshees of Inishirin. Um, I'm curious to see if we'll see any Avatar. I'm dying to see it this Friday and I honestly have no idea to make heads or tails of it if it's going to be good or not. It's been 13 fucking years for crying out loud. Anyways, without further ado, let's go check out the nominees. Yes, come on me, my love. No! Stop jumping on the keyboard. Okay. Uh, so, best picture drama. Avatar. Okay. Uh, interesting. Elvis, honestly, I haven't seen that one. I'm I'm sure it, uh, it looks beautiful and the performances are great, but it just didn't seem like my cup of tea, so I decided to skip on this one. Um, yeah, there's just so many things to do that it's impossible to catch everything <laughs> in one go. Um, the Fablemans. I didn't do my review yet on this film, but spoiler alert, I absolutely loved it. And honestly, it's amazing just how how consistent Steven Spielberg is. The guy just is at 75 years old and he's still putting out some of his best works to date. It's, uh, yeah, he's a force to be reckoned with. Tar. Oh, yeah. That makes perfect sense. Um, and Top Gun Maverick. Yeah, I still, I still have to watch the first Top Gun, but it doesn't surprise me seeing it here. I mean, it's just been, uh, now everyone's been loving it, both critics and users alike, viewers alike, rather. Um, moving on, Best Picture Musical Comedy, Babylon. <laughs> My God, I don't, that movie looks crazy. I'm definitely going to go see it when it comes out in cinema. Um, I love the director. I love his previous films, Whiplash, La La Land, and uh, First Man. My God, three fantastic films, one after another. So, I mean, this one seems like quite different from the, his other films, but you know what? I'm, I'm all ears. Um, and yeah, I'm loving the other nominations here. Banshees of Inisherin fantastic film and everything ever all at once i'm i'm thrilled to see it yet um, one one of the big nominations here if not the biggest glass onion knives out totally deserves it fantastic film definitely a crowd pleaser and triangle of sadness i didn't get to see this one i'm sure i'd love it but it's just one of those films that honestly like if i could soul split i would go see it there's there's just too many things to do um yeah maybe i'll go see it over the christmas break uh, we'll see we'll see if it's still in theaters by then. Best Actress in a Motion Picture Drama. Uh, let me bring that a bit lower. Kate Blush and Tar. Of course, that's a no-brainer. Sorry, I'm just keeping an eye on what they're doing behind me. Um, Olivia Coleman, Empire of Light. Um, I didn't get to see Empire of Light. Maybe I will. I do love Sam Mendes. Um, I've heard mixed reviews, but you know, that doesn't always... Mis I always would like to make my own opinion regardless. Um, we'll see if I go get to see it. Uh, but yeah, Olivia Colman, she's amazing. I mean, she was phenomenal, beyond phenomenal in her Oscar-winning role for The Favorite. Christ almighty, that was a wild film. And even last year, I, yeah, it was last year for The Lost Daughter. Fantastic film. Viola Davis, The Woman King. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I didn't get to see this film, but there's no denying that Viola Davis is a badass. I mean, she's always been a badass. So, yeah, she, she, she seems perfect for that role. Um, Anna de Armas in Blonde. Yeah, I mean, I, I really got to see that film. I mean, I've heard a lot of mixed comments and like some shocking moments in the film, but um, I think this would be my kind of film. Um, not necessarily because I would enjoy it. I think it would probably be shocking, disturbing, but yeah, there's, there's something about it that attracts me, but I, I still have yet to see it. Maybe over the Christmas break. Um, and Michelle Williams in The Fablemans. Yeah, uh, that's... 
she was phenomenal in this film. So so honestly, I'd say it's the battle between Kate Blanchett and Michelle Williams. I wouldn't be surprised if Michelle Williams gets it because I mean I mean Kate Blanchett, we just know that she's like one of the all time greatest. Um yeah, I, I I wouldn't complain at all if Michelle Williams would win. She's uh, she was she had such a beautiful performance in that film. Um, but if I had to bet on who wins for a uh, best picture musical or comedy, um, I'm gonna go for everything ever all at once. I mean, that's my personal favorite. So that's who I would choose. Who who do I think will win? It could be Babylon. We'll see. We'll see once I once I get to see it. I don't think Banshees of Inisherin is gonna take the cake here. Um, but yeah, just to see it nominated, that's that's more than enough for me. Um, and who's going to take the, the prize over here? I'd say it's between The Fablemans and Tar. I'm leaning towards Tar. I think this film is just a juggernaut of creativity and artistic nuance. All right, moving on. Best Actor, Motion Picture Drama. Um, Austin Butler as Elvis. Austin Butler, excuse me. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. He seems... I mean, it seems like a wonderful role for him. Uh, Brendan Fraser, The Whale, soon coming out of theaters. Can't wait to see it. Um, we got Hugh Jackman in The Sun. I totally, this film totally went on the radar for me. Uh, Bill Nye um, in Living. Why don't I know this film? And Jeremy Pope in The Ex Inspection. I know of this film, haven't gone to see it yet. I do my best to see as many films as possible in cinema, but it's just impossible to get everything. Um, okay, next page. Uh, best Actress, Motion Picture, Musical, or Comedy. So we got Leslie Manville, Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. Uh, I don't even know this film. Sorry. Um, I mean, she was amazing in The Phantom Thread. If this is the actress that I have in mind, I'm pretty sure she is. Uh, Margot Robbie in Babylon. Yeah, uh, no arguments there. I mean, I haven't even seen the film yet, but she's... <laughs> Seems to have a crazy role in the film. Give me a second. No, 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 no. You guys come back here. Sorry about that. These two are going off on their own adventures, which they shouldn't be doing what they are trying to be doing. <laughs> anyway, um, Anna Taylor Joy for the menu. I don't know that this is like her best performance ever, but you know what? I'm a big Anna Taylor Joy. Anna Taylor Joy fan, excuse me. So, no complaints there. Emma Thompson, good luck to you. Leo Grande, uh, I don't even know this film. Uh, sure, why not? And Michelle, yo, yo, uh, for everything ever, all at once. Yeah, she is just magical in this film. An actress that feels like she's still in her prime. She just kicks so much ass and shows. So so much nuance and depth. My God. Well, it's a once in a lifetime performance, honestly. So I really hope that she takes it, but I wouldn't be surprised if Margot Robbie takes it here. But yeah, I am hoping for Michelle Yeoh. All right, moving on to Best Actor in Motion Picture Musical Comedy. Uh, Diego Calva in Babylon. I have yet to see it, obviously, but we'll see Daniel Craig in Glass Onion. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, he's so he's so charming as um, as Benoit Blanc. So yeah, I have, I totally have no problem with this. Adam Driver in White Noise. I do love me some Adam Driver. I haven't seen White Noise, so I I can't comment too much on that. Colin Farrell on the Banshees of Inisherin. Yeah, I think he's probably going to take it. It's really. Probably his best performance ever. Yeah, that movie is just fantastic. And Ray Fiennes, I can finally pronounce his name correctly, uh, in The Menu. Totally deserved that. I don't necessarily think it's one of his best performances ever, but nonetheless, he just has such a towering presence in the film. Like, every time he comes in, he just sucks out all the air in the cinema. It was just, yeah, definitely a powerful performance. So I'm, I'm not complaining about seeing... Any of these guys here, yeah, it's it's a pretty strong uh, it's a pretty strong uh, group here. Angela Bassett for Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. I haven't seen this film yet, but I hear nothing but rave reviews about her performance here. So this totally makes sense. And Carrie Condon for The Banshees of Inisherin, totally makes sense. She gives a powerhouse performance. Just 
it, it, it's an absolute tour de force performance from her. Yeah, um, I would give it to her, but we'll see in the end. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and everything ever all at once. Yeah, she has a lovely, lovely role in this film. I'm I'm so happy to see her get recognition here. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, I'm I'm really thrilled by this. Um, Dolly D. Leon and Triangle of Sadness. I I really should go see this film. I really think it will be my cup of tea. Excuse me one more time. What's going on there? Oh, okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I don't mind if they go exploring gallivanting as they usually do, but there's some specific things that they do that I'm not okay with. Um, and Carrie Mulligan, she said, yeah, honestly, like I did my review on what she said not too long ago. Most of the cast is fantastic, but Carrie Mulligan by far has the most powerful performance here. Yeah, okay. Um, who do I think is going to win? Mm, that that's a tough one. Yeah, this is a very strong cast. Um, I'm gonna go with Carrie Condon. I think that she just has such a memorable, and yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm 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 lost at words here, but yeah, she's fantastic. Best supporting actor. I am loving all the acting nominations for Banshees of Initiative. Brandon, Brandon Gleason and Barry Keoghan, I, I learned that that's how you pronounce his name. Both of them were just phenomenal in this film. Brad Pitt and Babylon. <laughs> he seems like he has a wild role in this film as well. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see this film. I can't make heads or tails of it. It's going to be a wild ride. And Kei Hui Kwan and everything all at once. Yes, I am. Guys, I'm... I'm Fucking thrilled to see Banshees of Initiation and everything all at once getting all these nominations. This is beautiful and well deserved. God damn, this feels great. Um, Eddie Raymond, uh, Redmayne, excuse me, in the, the Good Nurse. Um, you know I'm curious to see this film and I hear great stuff about his performances. So yeah, very very strong supporting actor cast category rather. Um, okay, next page. So, so far, so good. I'm thrilled. Best director. This is the biggest one for me. James Cameron. Yeah, James Cameron. I mean, <laughs> he takes a sweet ass time making films nowadays, but when he does produce something, it, it really does set the standards for the next decade and plus of cinema. So, yeah, that makes perfect sense. And we have the Daniels for everything ever all at once. Oh, my God. That's that's fantastic. Boz Lerman for Elvis. Okay. Um, and Martin McDonough, the Banshees of Inishirin, well deserved. And Steven Spielberg, the Fablemans. Okay, very strong category here. But honestly, I mean, no insult to Boz Lerman. I mean, I, I enjoyed his films to a certain extent, but I've never been a huge fan overall. But honestly, like, I would replace him with Todd Field. Like, how is Todd Field as a director not in this category for Tar? That is a crime. I mean, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Like, whatever. Fuck him. But, I mean, the other four categories, that makes a lot of sense. But to not have Todd Field with this incredible achievement with Tar. Yeah. Missed opportunity of the grandest scale. Sorry, guys. You dropped the ball big time here. Um, but I am happy to see him uh, for best screenplay for Tar. Uh, well deserved. The Daniels again for everything all at once, and Martin McDonough for the Banshees of Inisherin. Three well deserved nominations here. And Sarah Polly for Women Talking. Yeah, I haven't seen this film yet, and I plan to go see it the second it's out in cinemas. That makes a lot of sense here. Um, and I'm surprised I haven't seen a single other nomination for that film yet. Um, anyways, at least yeah, we have one nomination for that film. It really seems like a film worth seeing. Um, and yeah, Tony Kushner and Steven Spielberg for The Fablemans. Not surprised. It really was a lovely, lovely film. I'll, I'll do my best to patch up a review for you guys as soon as possible for The Fablemans. Uh, best Picture Animated. Pinocchio. Yeah, I, I think this was going to take it. it. It was just such a beautiful and incredible visual experience. There's nothing like it. Yeah, not hating on any of the other ones. More so with... Marcel the Shell with shoes on. I really <laughs> love the idea of this film. It's such a adorable, adorable animated film. Cut them. 
Um, I heard good stuff about Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Uh, I also heard a lot of good stuff about Inu Uom, but I, I, have, I haven't seen it. Uh, Turning Red, I watched it. I did enjoy it very much. I wouldn't say it's necessarily like one of the top tier Pixar films, but it's definitely a good film and some very, very impressive animations, no doubt. Best Picture, non-English language, so foreign language category. Um, yeah, I really need to, like, I can't believe I'm still taking my sweet ass time watching All Quiet on the Western Front. Feels like a must watch. I don't know Argentina 1985. Um, and Close as well, I don't know of this one. Decision to Leave, I absolutely love that film. And RRR, along with All Quiet on the Western Front, I think during the Christmas vacations, I'm really gonna take time to just watch as many films as they can before the year end. I haven't seen these two films, but these three seem like definitely worthy contenders. Just checking up on the birds. Um, best score motion picture. Carter Burwell, The Banshees of Inisherin. Yes, I absolutely love the soundtrack in that film. Um, it, it was quite simple in a way, but extremely infectious and endearing. Alexandre Spratt for Pinocchio. Yeah, makes sense. Um, for women talking, Hildur, uh, wow, <laughs> how do you pronounce her name? Like, I, I know her, if, if I recall correctly, she did the soundtrack for Joker, which she also won an Oscar for. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to try and pronounce her name. I will look it up later and then rehearse it a bunch of times. But yeah, um, that seems like a really interesting choice. Yeah, I really got to see this film the second it comes out in cinema. Um, Justin Hurwitz for Babylon. Gotta see it. And John Williams. He's, what, 90 years old now? And he's still killing it. God damn. Um, did he just announce that he's retiring? Is this going to be his final film? Yeah, no doubt. A beautiful soundtrack for this film. Best song, motion picture. Um, yeah, I never... <laughs> I'm going to bet that the RR, RR takes it. I mean, these Bollywood films just go hard as fuck on their, uh, on their songs. So yeah, I, I'm putting my money on RRR for this one. Uh, best drama series. Um, I haven't watched most of these TV shows. I really want to watch Severance and Better Call Saul. I haven't watched anything from Better Call Saul. And I feel like I'm missing out big time. Yeah, I'm going to need to get onto that. Um, so yeah, for, for the next uh, parts, I'm not quite as familiar with, but I'll, I'll give my comments as far as I can. Uh, I really enjoyed Only Murders in the Building. Honestly, um, I think the, the cast here is great. Great writing as well, has a great sense of humor. It's a pretty decent mystery too. I don't think it's anything like, oh, ah, mind-blowing, but very, very aesthetically pleasing and well executed. Um, I don't know anything about the other ones. Wednesday, I tasted it a bit on Netflix. Um, just to see out of curiosity, and I, I love that it really feels like a Tim Burton production. It, it really shows that he's directing this thing. Um, not my cup of tea, though. I've never been the biggest Tim Burton fan. I'm not hating on him. I, even though he's not exactly my cup of tea, I think he's fantastic for what he was, uh, for what he does. He was born to do this stuff. But yeah, not for me. Uh, moving on. Best limited series, anthology, or series for television or motion picture. Uh, yeah, White Lotus. I, I hear a lot of people talking about this thing, and if quite a few people, even on this channel, have recommended me this thing. <laughs> Pam and Tommy, uh, that seems like a wild ride. I think The Dropout is the one that interested me the most, but yeah, uh, too many things, too little time. Television, motion picture... Oh, best actress, excuse me. <laughs> I'm chopping off that that bit. Uh, so best actress, uh, Jessica Chastain, Julie Garner, Lily James, Julia Roberts, and Amanda Seyfried. Um, honestly, I haven't watched any of these, so can't really comment. Same with these. Yeah, no, I think I'm, I'm going to just refrain from commenting on the rest. I'll just scroll through because honestly, I just haven't been watching any of these TV shows at all. Um... Yeah, Zendaya and Euphoria, I hear that she's just phenomenal in this TV series. I don't know that um, I'll ever get around to watching it, but uh, I'm glad that uh, she's getting a lot of praise for that. From what I understand, it's well-deserved. Jeff Bridges, the old man. Kevin Costner seems to be killing it with Yellowstone. Um, Andor, that's definitely 
that's definitely a TV series that I really want to see. And especially me working on a Star Wars project, uh, that makes sense that I would uh, just nourish myself with that uh, inspiration. And Bob Odenkirk. Yeah, I really got to catch up on Better Call Saul and just binge watch it at one point. Um, Severance, I hear a lot of good stuff about it. I think it would really be really up my alley. Yeah, Selena Gomez in Only Murders in Billing. I really think she, she found a great fit in this TV series. As well as the rest of the cast. <laughs> and yeah, Jenna Ortega for Wednesday. Uh, I mean, even though I'm not the biggest fan of this, this show, from what I've seen at least, I think she's just like the perfect fit for Wednesday. So that makes perfect sense. Um, yeah, I, I won't comment further. Um, Donald Glover for Atlanta. I know a lot of people really love Atlanta. And yeah, these two, yeah, th those three leads and only Merce in the building are just wonderful. And their chemistry between each other is, is quite magical. Yeah, I, I definitely support that. So the supporting actresses. Yeah, I, I don't know any of these, unfortunately, so I, I, I really can't comment further. And what's left? Supporting actors. Uh, was Seth Rogen in Pam and Tommy? Okay, I had no idea. Okay, well, I mean, congratulations to all these actors and actresses. John Torturo on Severance. I didn't know he was in that. Yeah, if there's one TV show out there from all of these, apart from Better Call Saul, that really interests me. It's severance. Okay, well, there you have it. Those are my impressions. As always, wishing you and your loved ones nothing but the best. Take care and talk to you very soon. i got a bunch of videos coming up ASAP, though I am quite busy. Anyways, until next time.